Part two, chapter eleven of a vital question or what is to be done by Nikolai Chernyshevsky, translated by Nathan Haskell Dole, eighteen fifty two to nineteen thirty five, and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two, first love and legal marriage, chapter eleven well my dear haven't you found any situation for me yet not yet vira pavlovna but don't despair we shall find one every day i go to see two or three families it is impossible that a respectable place will be not found at last where you can live ah but if you only knew my friend how hard how hard it is for me to remain here when there was no near possibility for me to escape from this degradation from this misery i kept myself by main force in a deathly apathy but now my friend it is too suffocating in this foul wretched atmosphere patience patience vira pavlovna we shall find something here is an example of their talk for a week tuesday patience patience vira pavlovna we shall find something my friend how much trouble this is causing you what a waste of time how can i repay you you will repay me my dear by not getting vexed lopukhov said this and became confused vierotchka looked at him no it was not that he did not finish his sentence he did not intend to add to it and he is waiting for her answer what should i be vexed about what have you done lopukhov became still more confused and seemed to be grieved what is the matter my friend to think you did not notice it at all he spoke so sorrowfully and then he laughed so gaily ach beau moi how stupid i am how stupid forgive me my friend nu no, what is the matter nothing you have already given me my reward ach what do you mean what a jester you are well all right you may call me so on thursday came the trial of hamlet according to saxon's grammar for several days after that marya alexyevna takes some little though not much rest from her inspection saturday after tea marya alexyevna goes out to count over the clothes which the laundress had brought my dear i think the matter will be successful really if that is so ach bouge moi ach bouge moi arrange it as soon as possible it seems to me that i shall die if this is to go on much longer when will it be and how it will be decided to-morrow the hope is almost almost certain what is it how is it keep calm my friend you'll be noticed here you are almost dancing with joy marya alexyevna will be back after something if you don't look out well you are a fine fellow you came in so radiant that mamenka looked at you a long time at any rate i told her why i was happy i saw that it was necessary to tell her and so i said that i have found a splendid place you horrid horrid man here you keep cautioning me and you have not told me as yet a single thing what is it do tell me at last this morning kirsanov you know my dear that my chum's name is kirsanov i know you horrid horrid man i know now speak quick without any more nonsense you yourself are hindering me my friend ah bouche moi and all these digressions without ever once coming to the point i don't know how i could punish you i will get you down on your knees yet it cannot be done here i command you to get down on your knees in your room as soon as you get home and i want your kirsanov to look on and then send me a note saying that you were down on your knees do you hear what i am going to do with you very good i will get down on my knees and now i shall hold my peace after i have undergone my punishment and am forgiven i will speak i forgive you only speak you horrid man thank you you grant forgiveness when you yourself are to blame you yourself have made all the interruptions vira pavlovna why do you call me so i thought you were going to call me my friend yes i meant it as a reproach my friend i am a man easily offended and very severe a reproach how dare you make me reproaches i do not want to hear you you don't certainly i don't what is there for me to hear you have told me everything already that the matter will be arranged that it will be decided to-morrow you see my friend you yourself don't know anything more to-day what is there to hear good-bye my dear but listen to me my friend my friend do listen i am not going to listen i am going away 
she came back speak quick i will not interrupt you ah bouge moi if you only knew how happy you have made me give me your hand see how warmly warmly i press it but why are your eyes full of tears i thank you i thank you this morning kirsdnof gave me the address of a lady who made an appointment for me to call on her to-morrow i am not personally acquainted with her but i have heard much about her from a mutual friend who acted as go-between i know her husband though we have met at our friends many times judging from all this i am sure that one could get along well in her family and when she gave her address to her friend she said that she was certain that we should agree about terms consequently the matter can be looked upon as almost absolutely settled ah how good it will be what joy murmured vierotchka but i want to have it settled soon as soon as possible will you come from her directly to us no my dear that would rouse suspicions i never come here except during lesson hours i'll do this way i will send a letter to marya alexyevna by mail saying that i shall not be able to give the lesson on tuesday and shall have to postpone it till wednesday if the letter says wednesday morning you will understand that the matter is arranged if it says wednesday evening you will know that it has fallen through but it is almost certain to read in the morning marya alexyevna will tell it to fyodor and to you and to pavel konstantinovitch when will the letter get here in the evening oh it's so long no i shall not have enough patience and then what shall i learn from the letter only yes and then i shall have to wait till wednesday it is torturing if it is yes i shall go and call on the lady as soon as i can i shall want to know all about it but how can it be managed that is the way i'll do i'll be waiting for you on the street when you leave that lady's my friend that would be still more risky than for me to call on you no it would be much better for me to call on you no perhaps it would be impossible for us to have a word together at any rate mamenka might become suspicious no it would be better as i suggested first i have such a thick veil that no one would recognize me through it well i admit that your plan seems feasible let me think there's no time to think mamenka may be here any minute where does the lady live on galernaya street near the bridge what time shall you call on her she appointed twelve o'clock at twelve i shall be sitting on the konogvardaisky boulevard on the last bench and at the end nearest the bridge i said that i would wear a thick veil but here's a sign for you i will carry a roll of music in my hand if i am not there on time you will know that i am detained but you sit down on that bench and wait i may be late but i shall be there without fail how well i have planned it how grateful i am to you how happy i shall be how is your bride dmitri sergeitch see i call you dmitri sergeitch instead of my friend how glad how glad i am vierotchka ran to the piano and began to play my dear what a degradation to art how ruinous to your taste to give up operas for galops certainly certainly in a few minutes marya alexyevna returned dmitri sergeitch played two-handed preference with her at first he won then he allowed her to win he even lost thirty-five kopecks this was the first time and it filled her with victorious glory and when he went away he left her greatly pleased not so much on account of the money as on account of the victory there are purely ideal pleasures even for hearts soiled with materialism and this is proof positive that a materialistic explanation of life is unsatisfactory end of part two chapter eleven recording by expatriate in bangor maine